The Life and Sad Ending of Barbara Cook Cook was born in Atlanta, Georgia, the daughter of Nell and Charles Bunyan Cook. Her father was a traveling hat salesman and her mother was an operator for Southern Bell. Her parents divorced when she was a child and, after her only sister died of whooping cough, Barbara lived alone with her mother. She later described their relationship as so close, too close. I slept with my mother until I came to New York. Slept in the same bed with her. That's just, it's wrong. But to me, it was the norm. As far as she was concerned, we were one person. Though Barbara began singing at an early age, at the Elks Club, and to her father over the phone, she spent three years after graduating from high school working as a typist. Cook married acting teacher David Legrand on March 9, 1952, after meeting at a resort on the Borscht Belt. They performed together in a national stage tour of Oklahoma in 1953. The couple divorced in 1965. They had one child, Adam. While visiting Manhattan in 1948 with her mother, Cook decided to stay and try to find work as an actress. She began to sing at clubs and resorts, eventually procuring an engagement at the Blue Angel Club in 1950. She made her Broadway debut a year later, as Sandy in the short-lived 1951 musical Flahooly. She landed another role quickly, portraying Adu Annie in the 1951 City Center revival of Rodgers and Hammerstein's Oklahoma, and stayed with the production when it went on its national tour the following year. Also in 1952, Cook made her first television appearance on the show Armstrong Circle Theater which presented her in an original play entitled Mr. Bemis Takes a Trip. In 1954, Cook appeared in the short-lived soap opera Golden Windows and starred as Jane Piper in a television version of Victor Herbert's operetta Babes in Toyland. That summer, she returned to City Center to portray Carrie Pipperidge in a revival of Rodgers and Hammerstein's Carousel, which Cook described as the first time the critics really paid attention to me. It was like I was the new young thing. It was very important for me. In 1955, she received major critical praise for playing the supporting role of Hilda Miller in Plain and Fancy. Walter Kerr wrote of her performance, Barbara Cook, right off a blue and white Dutch plate, is delicious all the time, but especially when she perches on a trunk, savors her first worthwhile kiss, and melts into the melody of this is all very new to me. Cook's critical reputation and coloratura soprano range won her the role of Cunegonde in Leonard Bernstein's 1956 operetta Candide, in which she premiered the vocally demanding, show-stopping comic aria Glitter and Be Gay. Although Candide was not a commercial success, Cook's portrayal of Cunegonde established her as one of Broadway's leading ingenues. In 1957 she appeared in a second city center revival of Carousel, this time in the role of Julie Jordan, and won a Tony Award for creating the role of Marion the Librarian in Meredith Wilson's 1957 hit The Music Man. Cook continued to appear regularly on television in the late 1950s, starring in a 1956 producer's showcase production of Bloomer Girl, a 1957 live broadcast of The Yeoman of the Guard, and a 1958 musical adaptation of Hansel and Gretel. She also made appearances on Alfred Hitchcock Presents, The Ed Sullivan Show, The Dinah Shore Chevy Show, and The Play of the Week. Cook starred in an acclaimed 1960 City Center revival of Rodgers and Hammerstein's The King and I and in the short-lived 1961 musical The Gay Life. In 1963, she created the role of Amalia Balash in the classic Jerry Bach Sheldon Harnick musical She Loves Me. Her performance prompted Norman Nadel of the World Telegram and Son to write, Her clear soprano is not only one of the finest vocal instruments in the contemporary musical theater, but it conveys all the vitality, brightness and strength of her feminine young personality, which is plenty. One of the songs from She Loves Me, Vanilla Ice Cream, became one of Cook's signature songs. In the mid-1960s, Cook began working less frequently. 
She appeared in the 1964 flop Something More, which ran for only 15 performances on Broadway, and tried her hand at non-musical roles, replacing Sandy Dennis in the play Any Wednesday in 1965 and originating the role of Patsy Newquist in Jules Pfeiffer's 1967 play Little Murders. She starred in national tours of the unsinkable Molly Brown in 1964 and Funny Girl in 1967. Her last original book musical role on Broadway came in 1971 when she played Dolly Talbo in The Grass Harp. In 1972, Cook returned to the dramatic stage in the Repertory Theatre of Lincoln Center's production of Maxim Gorky's Enemies. As she began struggling with depression, obesity, and alcoholism in the 70s she eventually quit drinking in 1977, Cook had trouble getting stage work. In the mid-1970s Cook's fortunes changed for the better when she met and befriended composer and pianist Wally Harper. Harper convinced her to put together a concert and on January 26, 1975, accompanied by Harper, she made her debut in a legendary solo concert at Carnegie Hall that resulted in a highly successful live album. Continuing a collaboration with Harper that lasted until his death in 2004, Cook became a successful concert performer. From the mid-1970s on, Cook returned only sporadically to acting, mostly in occasional studio cast and live concert versions of stage musicals. In September 1985 she appeared with the New York Philharmonic as Sally in the renowned concert version of Stephen Sondheim's Follies. In 1986, she recorded the role of Martha in the Sharon Burgett musical version of The Secret Garden along with John Cullum, Judy Kay, and George Rose. In 1987 she performed the role of Julie Jordan in a concert version of Rogers and Hammerstein's Carousel with Samuel Ramey as Billy, Sarah Brightman as Carrie, and the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, and she won the Drama Desk Award for Outstanding One-Person Show for a Concert for the Theatre. In 1988, she originated the role of Margaret White in the ill-fated musical version of Stephen King's Carrie, which premiered in England and was presented by the Royal Shakespeare Company. In 1994, she provided both her acting and singing skills to the animated film version of Thumbelina, as Thumbelina's mother which featured music by Barry Manilow. That same year she was inducted into the American Theatre Hall of Fame. In 2000, she was one of the only American performers chosen to perform at the Sydney 2000 Olympic Arts Festival in the Sydney Opera House. Also in 2000, she was joined by Lilias White, Malcolm Getz, and Debbie Gravitt on the studio cast recording of Jimmy McHugh's Lucky in the Rain. In February 2001, Cook returned to Carnegie Hall to perform Barbara Cook Sings Mostly Sondheim which was recorded live and released on CD. Critically acclaimed from the start, Cook then took the concert to the West End Lyric Theatre in 2001. She garnered two Olivier Award nominations for Best Entertainment and Best Actress in a Musical for the concert. She went on to perform Sings Mostly Sondheim at Lincoln Center for a sold-out 14-week run from December 2001 to January 2002, and again in June 2002 to August 2002. She was nominated for a Tony Award for Best Theatrical Event. She took the show on a national tour throughout major cities in the United States. DRG filmed the stage production during a performance at the PepsiCo Theater, SUNY Purchase, New York, on October 11, 2002, 44, and it was released on DVD on the DRG, Coke Entertainment label. In June and August 2002 Cook performed Sings Mostly Sondheim at the Terrace Theater, Kennedy Center as part of the Sondheim celebration. In 2004 she performed two limited engagement concert series at the Vivian Beaumont and Mitzi Newhouse Theaters at Lincoln Center, Barbara Cook's Broadway, with Harper as her musical director, arranger. She received the New York Drama Critics Circle Award and a nomination for the Drama Desk Award, Outstanding Solo Performance. A recording of the concert was made.
Cook died, at the age of 89, of respiratory failure on August 8, 2017, at her Manhattan home.